Good morning, everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how I build 12 of my brand new portable self storage units. Today is December 23rd, 2020, two days before Christmas, um, which is exciting, but today is actually pretty exciting for me for a very different reason. Uh, I am actually taking delivery this morning of 12 brand new portable self-storage units. Uh, for those of you who don't know or don't know who I am, my name's Nick, and I own a portable self-storage business with, uh, now after today's delivery, 96 units that I rent out to customers in the area. Um, I also own uh, three rental properties and I invest heavily in the stock market and that's what my channel's all about. Uh, but in this particular video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I take delivery of and build a brand new set of storage units. This is a good time of year to be getting a new set of them too because it's December. It's typically a slow time of year for renting out the container. So this gives me an opportunity to not only take delivery of them, but have some time to be able to build them before spring hits when it's really my busy time of year for delivering these storage units to customers who rent them on a monthly basis. And that's the gravy time for when I make money in my business. So exciting day, um, a lot of work goes into this, but once I have these uh, built, these are just little mini cash flow machines. I deliver these containers all over the place. They rent on a monthly basis, just like a traditional self storage unit does. And plus I earn extra fees by delivering them and moving them loaded. So um, it's great little business, very similar to real estate and the fact that I'm renting them out monthly. Um, I get some of the benefits. I get even better tax benefits because they're considered equipment, not real estate. So I can depreciate them. Uh, much faster. I could depreciate them 100% in the first year if I want to. So in these early years of my business while I'm growing, it's a massive tax advantage because here I am, I, I can rent these things out right away and cash flow on them great because I can finance them 100% since they're equipment, but I can also write them off entirely in the first year. So any of the income I make on these things, I'm able to completely wipe out with the depreciation deduction. So. It's a great little uh, investment over time. So anyhow, stay tuned. I'm gonna show you guys how I build these things.
everybody. So today is December 26, 2020. Um, I wasn't able to get video of it the other day. I was struggling with it too much. I ended up having to do a bunch of work in order to get these storage units in. And I wasn't able to capture all of that on video just because of everything I had to do. And the weather was super crappy. I mean, it was raining hard. But I did finally end up getting all 12 of my brand new units indoors. And that's what this looks like. So now my next steps, these brackets here, uh, these like brownish, maroonish brackets are holding the roof piece down to the whole bottom part of the unit. So I gotta go around and take all those off. And you'd be surprised, those are some pretty serious brackets. So they're pretty heavy. I would say probably, you know, at least 10 pounds a piece. So I'm gonna take all of those brackets, stack them here on this pallet, and then um, the corner pieces to all these storage units are slid right in here into these forklift spots. So I'm gonna go around and unpackage all those and set them on each of the corners that they'll eventually be going on. And then that way, when I finally do have some help here um, with a tractor or forklift for raising the roofs of all these, everything will be laid out where it needs to be so we can quickly put them together. Uh, you'll see later in this video, once we get a system going down, we'll be able to put together each one of these units in about 15 to 20 minutes a piece. So one of the things I was struggling with to get the units inside is actually these fork pockets uh, dimensions right here in the end of the units were a little too small for the forks on my machine. So I had to spend a couple hours grinding away at the fork. So you can see right here, that's about, you know, it's about a whole fingers, fingers width of metal that I needed to cut and grind away from my forks in order for the end of these forks up to this point to be able to slide into those fork pockets. So that took me a few hours of grinding uh, to get that done. But once that was done, I was finally able to get the fork pockets on the inside of these and then the wheels on the other side so I could move each of these storage units uh, inside this warehouse. Um, normally, how this is designed is all the weight is on these wheels. So it goes on the forks and then the top part of this meal leans against the upper part of the storage units. And then so that way it takes, there's no weight on the back of the meal. It's all on these tires in the front of the forklift. But if it doesn't have anything up in this area for this to lean against, it really doesn't have much lifting power. Um, so you can see that when I slid the forks into these pockets, the only thing it was actually lifting against was the forks. So you can see that I actually bent them a little bit. It looks worse because the whole thing's leaning back. But you can see right there, I actually bent those up a little bit. So I'll straighten them out a little bit, but I don't have to worry about it too much because once these units are actually built, then the top of this will actually be leaning against the unit and it'll take an immense amount of pressure off those and actually probably help straighten them back out over time. I hate to heat those up and straighten them out too much and you know take away or degrade the integrity and the strength of the steel too much. So. Hopefully, just by getting these built and having the machine properly lift against the units will help fix that issue. But anyhow, stay tuned as I get these babies built. Like I said, these are 12 brand new ones. Um, excited to be growing again. This is a good time of year to get these in. Gives me time uh, to get them built. And then once spring, May, June-ish, comes around i'll have a good inventory that's ready to go out the door when customers start calling so excited for more growth um, each one of these units i'm able to rent for over a hundred dollars a piece um, typically rent them for around 130 dollars uh, per month you know if people do longer term i give discounts around 100 a month um, so you know even if just being conservative if i get all 12 of these rented out that's an extra $1,200 per month in revenue. And it doesn't cost me near that to finance these all at 100%. And the other beautiful thing about it is these are considered personal property or equipment. 
not real estate. So I'm gonna be able to depreciate these 100% in the first year or over a seven year span, however I wanna do that. Um, so I can completely wipe out the income that they generate uh, on paper through uh, depreciation. So it can be a pretty good little scheme, but of course the risk is maybe I don't get them all rented out. Um, so far, I, you know, I've been growing this business over the years by just renting more and more out each year, more and more people are finding out about me. So I've just been naturally growing, but who knows, there could come a time where I kind of hit the plateau around here. I do live in a pretty rural market, so sometimes that worries me. You know, I love to just go get huge amounts of debt and buy a ton of these, uh, but I'm in such a rural area, you know, I just wonder when I'm gonna hit the peak of demand around here. But so far, so good.